Welcome back to In Business. Uh, Friday morning, we will get the latest jobs data out. And today, we're taking a look at what to expect and which areas in the job market are actually seeing an increase in hiring so far this year. Here to tell us what he's seeing and the potential for job growth is Kevin Kelly. He's CEO at Chicago-based recruiting firm Hydric and Struggles. Thank you so much for joining me this morning. You know, today we saw unemployment claims continue to tick up, although a bit less than forecast. There is a question there about whether that means there's a sense of fatigue among job searchers or whether perhaps the job picture is getting a little bit brighter. What are you seeing out there? Well, it's definitely getting uh, brighter, Margaret. What we've seen actually uh, the end of the third quarter last year was an increase in recruiting in, in a number of sectors, uh, not only financial services, but across life sciences, across some parts of consumer goods, and again, the alternative and re renewable energy space as well. Uh, coupled with that, we've also seen a renewed emphasis on succession planning at the CEO and board level. Mm -hmm. I've been speaking to a number of economists, a number of market watchers who basically make a business out of making guesstimates on your line of work, the kind of hiring that we're going to be seeing. I'm hearing increasingly is a sense that during this earnings season, we'll start to hear from companies that, yes, productivity is up, but all of a sudden they're going to need to bring on board perhaps more people to match increased demand. I'm hearing that in retail and manufacturing. Are you seeing that play out in your space? We are. And again, last year we saw not only a financial crisis, but with somewhat of a leadership crisis. And what going into the third and fourth quarter of last year, what we saw was a pent up demand on the recruiting front. And also, companies' uh, ability to expand their businesses and products internationally and grow both in the Middle East, Russia, and Asia. Simultaneously, what we're seeing is a lot of interest in the U.S. markets by Russian companies, by Chinese companies, by Indian companies, who are looking at this as a once-in-a-lifetime opportunity to grab great talent in a market share here in North America. It's really interesting you just highlighted those because there were numbers released today uh, by HSBC saying that job creation in the emerging markets is actually hitting a two-year high. A lot of that was coming in like the manufacturing space, so certainly not executives at the level that, that your firm works at, but an indication there that perhaps in those lines of businesses we will be seeing follow through with hiring sometime soon. I want to ask you about the technology space because according to the Bureau of Labor T Statistics, more than two million new tech jobs are expected to be created by 2018. How much of that hiring is going to happen in, in 2010? I mean, I think you'll start to see organizations look at where they're uh, weak, where they can expand, where they can upgrade their talent. And uh, the CEOs that I've spoken to over the course of the last three months are uh, fairly cautious going into 2010. They're more optimistic than they were in 2009, but they are uh, cautious uh, with 2010. So you're starting to see uh, a lot of organizations dip their toe in the water, if you will. And there hasn't been a lot of hiring uh, the first six months of 2009. And again, that pent-up demand I mentioned has really built up. And organizations need different types of leaderships to get them through the next 12 to 18 months versus the last 18 to 24. Does this pickup mean that, that you can go back to perhaps charging higher fees from the, the people who are seeking your services to, to fill those executive slots? No, and, and at the end of the day, we're just trying to build sustainable leadership teams, not uh, look at uh, getting a higher fee. In fact, uh, most of the time we are capped, particularly across the board and in the areas in which we operate. So, you know, higher fees aren't something that you see with an increase in recruiting. It's, it's more of the supply-demand issue out there as more organizations try to go uh, and increase their global uh, exposure. So it's trying to find individuals who have the right skill set, the right um, backgrounds who actually can help given the uh, current economic crisis, uh, their organizations to have more of a sustain sustainable strategy. With such a large pool out there, presumably just with the unemployment rate at 10 percent, how do you find that right candidate right now? Well, it, it depends, again, on what the, the uh, individual organization is looking for. So, you know, it takes a lot of time and a lot of sifting. There is a, uh, a lot of candidates out there. And, and when organizations come to us, they're not saying, hey, listen, find us a particular individual to fill a gap. They're saying, help us win, help us build a, a business that we can be proud of over the next three to five years. And, and what we've found through our research at Hydric and Struggles is that when individuals don't succeed in organizations, it's not because they're not the most brightest 
best or the most intelligent. It's mo mostly because from the cultural standpoint, they're not fitting with the organization. So we tend to focus uh, a lot on the assessment, on the development of individuals, uh, more so than just providing a CV. And, and that's what Hydric and Struggles does. We, we focus on more of the leadership advisory component of making sure that individuals fit and stay with an organization for a longer period of time.